Indonesia's defense minister, a feared former general, will be its new president. A man who was removed from the army after he was found responsible for the kidnapping of political dissidents appeared to be on track to win the presidential election outright in the very first round without a runoff. The provisional results cast doubts on the future of one of the world's most vibrant democracies. The candidate, Prabowo Subianto, had a commanding lead in the three-way race for president. In the provisional counting, he was leading with more than 58% of the vote in the first round. This is according to unofficial tallies that have a history of accurately predicting the final results. The two other presidential candidates say it's too early to decide a winner. If these projections are confirmed, Indonesia, the world's third largest democracy, will be left contending with a president who has said that Indonesia needs neither elections nor democracy. Prabowo Subianto was barred from entering the United States for almost 20 years because of his human rights record. For many years, he was associated with Indonesia's longtime dictator, Suharto. The era of liberty that followed the ouster of Suharto in the late 90s could now be under direct threat with Prabowo's ascent to power. On Wednesday night, supporters of Prabowo chanted his name as he gave his victory speech in the capital, Jakarta. This victory must be a victory for all Indonesian people, Mr. Prabowo said in his victory speech. The election in Indonesia matters far beyond its borders. The world's fourth most populous country, the largest population of Muslims anywhere in the world, it's a country which has growing strategic importance both to the US and to China and also to other Indo-Pacific countries. Indonesia is one of the world's largest producers of coal, palm oil and nickel. It sits right on top of the supply chain of many international companies. All of that means the result of this Indonesian election will have a major bearing on the future course of ties in the Indo-Pacific. Prabowo Subianto has coveted the presidency for a number of years now. He's tried on different public personas to try and court voters. But what finally pushed him over the line was the explicit support of the popular outgoing president, Joko Widodo. Incidentally, Joko's son, Gibran Raka, is Prabowo's running mate. He will become the country's new vice president. By co-opting Prabowo, critics say that Jokowi showed the lengths to which he was willing to go to maintain his influence on Indonesian politics even after he demits office. As per Indonesian law, you cannot serve as president after two five-year terms. Democratic norms in Indonesia have eroded during Joko's time in power. He has stripped down the powers of an anti-corruption agency, he's rammed through a contentious labor law, and more recently, he appeared to engineer the placement of his son, Gibran, on the ballot to be vice president. Now, in the past, during the dictatorship years, Indonesia's declining democracy was closely related to the suppression of civil liberties. But in Jokowi's time, and now beyond that perhaps, there is a genuine fear in the deterioration in the quality of elections and also intervention from those who are in power. Now, these are not concerns that ordinarily matter to most ordinary Indonesians. The country has largely prospered under Joko Widodo's ambitious infrastructure program. Surveys have consistently shown that Indonesians want someone to continue Joko's legacy, and that is how they see Prabowo. Indonesia is an important outlier in a region where the will of the people is often ignored. Even though democracy is widely considered to be imperfect in this country, many Indonesians have embraced democracy as a way of life. Elections in the last three decades have been considered by and large free and fair. Voters say they do not want a return to the days of Suharto. Suharto incidentally happens to be the coming president, Prabowo's former boss, as the president, he was his defense minister, and also was his ex-father-in-law. Prabowo was married for a brief while 
to Suharto's daughter. Polling stations across thousands of islands spread across five time zones, open for just six hours. Tens of millions of people voted, celebrating what they call Pesta Democracy or Democracy Party. It can take weeks to declare the official results, given the expanse of the country, but results can be apparent within just hours after the polls close, thanks to so-called quick counts. Now, these counts involve independent polling companies who tally these ballots from a sampling of polling places nationwide. For the last few months, surveys showed Prabowo was slightly ahead of his opponents, Anis Bazwedan, who's a former governor of Jakarta, and Ganjar Pranovo, who's a former governor of Central Java. Now, the platforms of these three candidates did not differ very significantly, but Prabowo had a strongman image, and that set him apart. Following Suharto's ouster in 1998, Prabowo was discharged from the Indonesian army. The armed forces found that he was involved in a number of abduction and torture cases of pro-democracy activists. More than a dozen of those activists still remain missing to this day. Joko Widodo played a crucial role in the rehabilitation of Prabowo. He named Prabowo his defense minister in 2019, and then last fall, Gibran, who is Jokowi's son, joined forces with Prabowo, who is twice his age. Both men aggressively courted the massive youth vote. People who are younger than 40 have accounted for more than half of all eligible voters. In fact, they ran a slick social media campaign which sought to reban Prabowo as a Jamoy or a cuddly grandfather. It is far from clear what Jokowi's influence or role is going to be in Indonesian politics after he leaves office and after his son becomes the next vice president. Compared to the president, the vice president has very limited powers, but whoever holds that post is important because he or she happens to be next in line if the president dies. Mr. Jokowi used to be the hope of the Indonesian people However, he is now no longer the leader of the country. He is now moving into the role of a ruler, an official who is building dynastic politics. After all, even for Joko Widodo, who was oftentimes referred to as the Barack Obama of Indonesia, love of his family proved to be more powerful than the love of his country's fledgling democracy.